Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Good morning, everyone. Thank you, good morning. My name is Kristen Tobin. I'm the Associate Dean of Student Affairs here at NECO, and on behalf of our entire community, we wanna welcome you this morning. I wanna welcome all of you that are here in the room with us, and those of you who are joining us via live stream as well. Thank you so much for being here. Um, on behalf of our community, our trustees, our students, our faculty, and staff, we are honored to have you here to celebrate our class of 2024. A um, couple housekeeping items and then we will get started. Um, first of all, please take a moment to locate the nearest exit in case of an emergency. Uh, if you can also take a moment and silence any cell phones or other devices, we would very much appreciate it. We also ask that you refrain from using party favors, including noisemakers, balloons, or confetti during the ceremony. Fun is allowed, just none of those things, please. Um, we also want to let you know that today's ceremony is being uh, photographed by professional photographers. Um, they're going to be taking different photos for your Sierra graduates, one when they receive their hoods um, and another one when they receive their diplomas. And your graduate will have the opportunity to purchase those if they like. So you know that will be happening, that will be available. Um, you're encouraged to take photos and videos, but if you can please stay in your seats to do that so everyone can continue to see what's going on, that would be great. Uh, we also just wanted to let you know that at the end, there'll be a recessional um, that will conclude the event today. And at that point, everyone will stand um, and you'll stay standing until the last student has recessed out of the hall. So at this point, um, I'd ask that you please rise and remain standing as the procession enters. Please re stay, remain standing until the processional is complete and all the graduates are in their seats. Thank you so much, enjoy.
Welcome graduates, please be seated. Today, your families, the trustees, faculty, staff, and alumni of the college join me in celebrating you and your accomplishments. I would like to invite Simone Jadzak, Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion and Belonging to, to the podium to give our land acknowledgement. Thank you. Before we begin, let us acknowledge that we are joining from locations originally inhabited by indigenous people. Our physical presence on this land is due to historical and present violence that has been committed upon those who were here before many of our ancestors. In the greater Boston area, we are inhabiting the ancestral lands of the Mashpee Wampanoag, Aquina Wampanoag, Nipmuc, and Massachusetts tribal nations. We also affirm that this acknowledgement is insufficient. It does not undo the harm that has been and continues to be perpetuated against indigenous people, which is why at NECO we are working on action-oriented approaches to go beyond our land acknowledgement practice. Thank you for joining me in this moment, mentally honoring and respecting these ancestral grounds and the indigenous people still connected to the land. Thank you. Thank you, Simone. I would now like to recognize and thank our faculty marshals for leading our faculty and students in the processional today. Faculty marshals are senior members of NECO's faculty who have been nominated based on their astounding, outstanding service to the institution, excellence in teaching, and respect from their faculty colleagues. This year's faculty marshals are Thanasis Panorgis, MS, PhD, Associate Professor of Vision Science and the Director of Graduate Studies. Maureen Hanley, OD, Associate Professor of Biomedical Sciences and Disease. <laughs> Bina Patel, professor, OD, Professor of Biomedical Sciences and Disease and Director of International Programs. <laughs> Maybe a bit late, but would Dr. Panorgis Patel and Hanley please stand <laughs> and be recognized. Let me introduce to you the Board of Trustees, Administration, and guests who join me today in this commencement ceremony. These individuals marched into the room at the beginning of the ceremony and are sitting on the stage with us. Would the Board of Trustees please stand at this time? Would the leadership team please stand at this time? And would the President Emeritus, Dr. Clifford Scott, stand at this time? I would like to recognize the following very special guests in the audience. Please stand when you are introduced, and if you would mind holding your applause until all are introduced. This year's President's Medal winners, Mark Ferrara and Marge Axelrad, and their guests. Honorary degree recipient, Dr. Jane Guazda and her guests. Repre representatives from the class of 1974 who are here with us today to celebrate their 50th reunion. Thank you for being part of this special day. Let me take a moment, graduates, doctors, to officially welcome you to your commencement ceremony and offer you my most sincere congratulations. I must say how thrilled we are all to see you here today. As I end my sixth year as president, I find myself reflecting on what NECO has taught me. I've learned NECO feels like more than a community. It feels like an organization and a community. As I walk across NECO, I often hear NECO proud. NECO proud is more than a tagline. It's a commitment to every student's dream of becoming an optometrist and changing the way people see the world. 
Today, you receive far more than a degree. It's 130 years of community and the people who have shaped us along the way. During my inaugural speech, I committed to the college that we'd all work together in preparing today's optometrists for tomorrow's optometry. You entered optometry school in isolation due to a pandemic, and to say you've been resilient would be an understatement. It reminds me of a quote I recently read. I can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails to always reach my destination. You adjusted your sails. You trusted us. We trusted each other. The pandemic may have shifted where you were learning. However, the commitment to provide you with the skills and knowledge was always focused on enhancing the curriculum and your experience to prepare you for tomorrow's opportunities in optometry. You are prepared. And after today, we'll become leaders who will create the future of our beloved profession. I know it hasn't been easy. I also know we can expect great things from the class of 2024. I hope that today provides you the opportunity to celebrate with your fellow classmates, family, and friends while looking back at your journey, but more importantly, to provide you with confidence that the future and your potential are yours to create. I hope that you feel like I do, that becoming an optometrist was one of the best decisions in your life, and you allow you to make a real difference for those you serve. All commencement speeches give you advice, and I'll share with you six pieces of advice that have helped me through my career. The first piece of advice, your family, friends, and colleagues are key to your career journey and success. Always make time for family and spend time nurturing those important relationships. The second piece of advice, work hard and take the time to learn things you don't know. The increasing speed of technological innovation will create the need to adapt, but more importantly, provide new and more efficient ways of treating our patients. Don't stop being curious. Don't stop learning. It's in your hands now. The third piece of advice is learn to prioritize issues of importance and look for ways of aligning your strengths to your priorities. Your priorities will change and shift throughout your career and shifting your strategies will be essential. The fourth piece of advice is to make sure that you're listening to others and what they're saying, be it a patient, an employee, family, or friends. Don't assume that you know what they're trying to say. Becoming a good listener is one of the most important skills you can develop throughout your life as a doctor. The fifth piece of advice is to make a decision and not look back. You'll be faced with numerous decisions in your lifetime that make one you select the right one for you and move forward. Trust yourself and know that you're making the right choices with the knowledge, experience, and background you have at that time. Stay committed to the decision you made and adapt your approach when necessary. Throughout time, you'll get more comfortable with making decisions that are uncomfortable. Once you've made the decision, don't look back or regret it, just learn. And finally, the sixth piece of advice is to find mentors in all areas of your life who will support and provide you with feedback for continued growth. Ongoing professional meetings provide us opportunities to learn and deliberate different views while looking for new pathways that strengthen the profession and the role of the optometrist in vision and healthcare. I want to leave you with a quote from Edward Kennedy. He said, what counts in our leadership is not the length of years of service, but the reach of our vision, the strength of our beliefs, and the rare, rare quality of mind and spirit that can call for the best in our country and the best in the world. Each of you leaves here today as NECO alumni and leaders within the profession where our shared mission of changing the way people see the world brings out the best in what we do every day. As you embark on this journey, please remember that the oath you are about to take to serve all patients with compassion, integrity, and professionalism. 
Never forget the impact of how your work changes others' lives. Never forget our patients are not just a set of eyes, but individuals with unique needs and concerns. Be an advocate for patients. Be an advocate for optometry. Go and do good things. Serve your communities. You now have a gift. Together we are NECO proud. It is my privilege to introduce the next commencement speaker this morning, Dr. Kristen Griebel. For over a decade, Dr. Griebel has been part of the Board of Trustees and is currently ending her term as chair of the board. Prior to that, she was the president of the Alumni Association and has always been actively engaged at the college after graduation. Please help me welcome Dr. Griebel. Good morning, class of 2024. Thank you for bringing your families to Symphony Hall, this beautiful venue. You'll soon get to walk across a stage that hosts world-renowned orchestras, pop artists, comedians, and now new eye doctors. And your hard work allows you to be here today and applauded for your success. And I'm proud to be with you and your families and with my family too in a historically significant place to highlight your personal achievements. <clears throat> I've attended a lot of graduations and each class has a certain you know, amount of world events associated with it and I've gone maybe 45 seconds before you're gonna hear the word COVID, <laughs> but that's what hit you about six months before your arrival at NECO and you and I barely got to look at each other. I greeted you in 2020 with a mask on and talked about the importance of your white coat. But today I'm honored to see you wearing something different, the important black gown that you have and the green stole of optometry that you soon will have. While we celebrate the culmination of four years in Boston, I hope that you need no encouragement to continue your learning. You'll discover that you have favorite lecturers that you'll love to hear no matter what their specialty is and you'll find topics that you can't get enough of, and you'll sign up to hear many leaders in that field review or teach you new material. Optometry and the medical field in general evolves so quickly that I'd be hard pressed to find anyone in this room who doesn't benefit from being a student again for a few hours in order to stay current that year. NECO has provided you with a great intellectual and clinical experience to be an optometrist and to practice to the full extent that you're capable of. You might have already figured out your next steps, and for those who know what their calendar looks like in a couple of weeks, that's terrific. I hear that for a huge number of you this year, you'll pursue a residency in a certain area of care. I did a residency as well, and it helped confirm for me some things that I definitely wanted to do and some things that I didn't. Or maybe you'll be employed right away. But wherever you spend your time, pay attention to challenges that will come to you and see what you can learn from those experiences. Um, there might be a large challenge of stepping back at some point in your career to see if where you are is really where you want to be. Are you business-minded enough to carve out a name for yourself? Or do you work best in a large group of other doctors who don't have to make business decisions on top, of on top of patient care? It's not better to be in one setting versus another, but it's not right if it's not right for you. So take the time to figure out where you would like to be. New opportunities are given to you all the time and take advantage of those instead of letting them pass you by. Imagine yourself in new situations, allow for deviation and explore different paths. I hope your new profession will be a love in your life. I returned to NECO as a trustee after a decade of patient care to work with people whose mission it is to advocate for the college and to give you the best education they can. It's as much a part of my life now as seeing patients is. There are so many trustees who find value in the mission of this college, even when their backgrounds are not in optometry. And on behalf of all of the trustees, I would like to give you credit for embodying the mission and doing the work that it took to get to this point today. 
This particular class is special to me. I had the pleasure of hearing Sara liaise between the Board of Trustees and the students at our trustees meetings, from Anna, who shadowed me before she ever even started here, and Kristen, my niece and namesake, who gets to be the second one, <laughs> yay, <laughs> to receive her diploma. Your education here was not normal under any circumstances most of the time. But the world has opened back up to you, and you will join it as a doctor now. Impress this world with your knowledge, with your kindness, and success in changing how people see the world. That's our mission. So congratulations to the whole class of 2024, and thank you, NECO, for playing a pivotal role in my life and the life of my special family members. Thank you. Today, you're becoming alumni of the New England College of Optometry. As alumni, you will re represent your alma mater and make us NECO proud. It's a lifetime association with your fellow optometrists. Let me now introduce Dr. Thomas Andrea, president of the Alumni Association, to offer a greeting. Welcome, Dr. Andrea. Thank you, and good morning. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us to celebrate the achievements of the class of 2024. As the president of the Alumni Board, it is my honor to address you today as we mark this momentous occasion. Graduation is a time of celebration, a time of reflection, and a time to look ahead. You have each come a long way since your white coat ceremony nearly three years ago. Today, you fulfill the promise you made that day a promise to embark on the journey of becoming clinicians, a promise made to yourself and to your patients past, present, and future. As you prepare to embark on the next step in your journey as doctors, I would ask that you reflect on the significance of that promise. Today is a day of transition, as you have fulfilled one promise and make another. Today you put aside the student-length white coat which symbolizes your status as an intern, you hopefully have logged your last Meditrek encounter, and you bid goodbye to the preceptors, faculty, staff, and peers who supported you on this journey. Today, you join the esteemed ranks of the alumni of the New England College of Optometry. You join in carrying forth a legacy of excellence, innovation, compassion, and fellowship. And as alumni, we carry the torch of those who came before us, pioneers who paved the way for advancements in the provision of optometric care. Let us honor their legacy by striving for excellence in everything we do, by pushing the boundaries of our knowledge, and by tirelessly advocating for the well-being of our patients. Today, each of you becomes the doctor you have spent countless days, weeks, years of study, practice, and training to become. We honor your accomplishments and acknowledge all of your hard work, knowing that each of you are prepared to step forth into the profession as fellow eye care providers. Today may feel like an ending, and while this marks the end of one season of your life, we look joyously ahead to the next. If there is one thing I have learned since I walked across this stage 10 years ago, it is that your training, your education, your experiences in the realm of eye care will be ongoing. You will continue to garner wisdom from your peers, mentors, patients, family, and friends. And throughout this time, know that we are here to offer guidance and support no longer as preceptors to their interns, but as fellow colleagues in the profession of eye care. I wish to offer on behalf of the alumni of the New England College of Optometry our heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2024. My fellow doctors, for that's what you are now, go forth with confidence, compassion, and a commitment to changing the way people see the world. Thank you. I had to smile when he said doctors, and all of you smiled and made me smile. Thank you, Dr. Andrea, for those inspiring words and for your dedication to the college and the alumni. Each year, NECO awards honorary degrees upon recommendation of the Board of Trustees to distinguished individuals who have furthered the body of knowledge in eye care, expanded access to eye care in underserved communities, and have made outstanding contributions to the welfare and development of the college or communities in which we serve. 
I would like to introduce Dr. Eric Weisberg, Vice President of Academic Affairs, who will announce this year's recipient. Good morning to my colleagues, the class of 2024, and all of our invited guests. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, it's my honor and my privilege to introduce Dr. Jane Guazda, our honorary degree recipient. Jane, by all accounts, you have had a remarkable career, and we have all benefited from it. With your early work at MIT, focusing on the development of infant vision, evolving towards refractive error, and ultimately what will forever be your legacy, which are the major contributions that have allowed us to better understand the risk factors and the treatment of myopia. After almost 20 years at MIT, NECO was lucky enough to recruit you to our faculty in 1995. You led the charge of our Myopia Research Center. You put NECO on the research map, nationally and internationally, paving the way for what turned out to be a decades-long tradition of myopia research at the college that is still going strong, thanks to many of the faculty sitting with us here today. You're perhaps best known for your work as the principal investigator of the Correction of Myopia Evaluation Trial, which was the first NIH-sponsored clinical trial in optometry, the first. Since that, optometry has been on the receiving end of countless NIH awards. But we needed someone to do it first, and we needed someone to do it right, and Jane did that. Comet began as a three-year clinical trial, and it turned into a longitudinal study, a longitudinal study of myopia that spanned over 17 years. And I can go on and on talking about Jane's accomplishments, how she's given back to the profession through her national service, how she has upwards of 7,000 citations in the literature, how you have not only added to our knowledge, but for many you created a, blu a blueprint on how research should be done. And then, of course, the countless people that I am fortunate enough to include myself that have benefited from her mentoring, the examples that she set, and of course, what was always this notorious red pen that would mark up and slash papers without mercy but making them better thousands and thousands of times. So you often hear people that have achieved laudable amounts in their careers say that they have stood on the shoulders of giants. Jane is one of those giants that we all stand on the shoulders of. And it is my sincere pleasure to be able to acknowledge all you've done for me personally and for the profession with this honorary degree. So Dr. Guazda, will you please come forward? By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of New England College of Optometry and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I confer upon Jane Guazda the Doctor of Humane Letters degree with all rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. Congratulations, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Dean Weisberg and President Purcell for this really great honor. And congratulations to all the graduates and your families. Getting your optometry degree is a major achievement for which you all should be very proud. I also want to acknowledge my family and friends who are here. And it's great to be back among the faculty who now get to sit on the stage. All of these individuals helped me get here to this stage in so many different ways, so thank you very much. Actually, this is my second commencement address. The first was 60 years ago at my high school graduation. We were all sitting on the football field, and I started my words of wisdom. And wouldn't you know, the skies darkened, and the rains came, and we all had to run inside the gym. 
It was a chaotic situation. I was very bedraggled, a little worried about how it would all come out. But somehow we all started again. I gave my words, and my high school class graduated. So what are the lessons learned from that long ago speech I can impart to this year's graduates? By all means, plan ahead, practice, practice some more, but also embrace the unexpected. Realize everything's not going to go as planned, though I don't expect a storm today. And Symphony Hall is a much nicer venue than a high school gym full of wet people. You, of course, have lived through something totally unexpected, COVID. Over the past four years, NECO had to develop new ways of teaching, and you all had to adapt to new ways of learning. And you did very well during this challenging time, because here you are today getting your degree and in person, which for your college graduation probably didn't happen. So does this mean you're going to be prepared for the unexpected in the future? We certainly hope so, but there's really no way to know. Now, note, the unexpected is not always going to be negative. But I don't have time to revisit the amazing Red Sox comeback against the Yankees in 2004. But my advice is don't give up on your favorite sports teams and don't give up on yourself. So most of you likely now know what you're going to be doing, and I wish you well in whatever path you've chosen. Realize, though, that you can move on if something new comes along. I did. As Eric mentioned, about 30 years ago, NECO had the vision to create the Myopia Research Center, which my lab at MIT was asked to join. I had another option from a local medical center. And they kept saying, no students, no students. There'll be no students. You don't have to interact with students. You don't have to mentor students. And guess what? I chose NECO. And I can tell you it's been great to mentor and interact with students and to have good colleagues and institutional support. Figure out what's important to you and go for it. Given that I spent my career doing research, I want to encourage you to keep up with the literature, because it's important for new findings to get translated into practice. And occasionally, a rogue finding comes along, and for sure your patients are going to ask you about it. Take, for example, the finding from about a few years back. Night lights cause myopia. Well, that created such a panic among new parents. But fortunately, some of us had data that we could get into print showing light is beneficial for nearsightedness. Nightlights don't cause myopia. Anyway, I urge you to read new articles, attend talks, professional meetings, for the benefit of yourself and your patients. Now, for a final bit of advice, I offer you words of wisdom from three of my grandchildren. They're clear-eyed eight-year-olds. So number one, from Rebecca, don't get the orange sherbet flavor at the shop on Cape Cod because it's too sweet. <laughs> Number two, from Audrey, eat carrots because they make your eyes better. <laughs> and number three, from Thomas, Legos are fun and you don't always have to follow directions. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations.
The New England College of Optometry prides itself on recognizing individuals of distinction who've made significant contributions in eye care and health education. A special pri privilege of my office is to award the NECO Presidential Medal to professionals who have made a unique impact on the college and its constituencies. We are particularly pleased this year to recognize two individuals whose contributions to eye care and optometry is immeasurable. There are many who lead and influence from the front, and there are those who do it without much recognition and fanfare. <clears throat> Our two awardees this year have done as much to influence the progression of the eye care space as anyone over the past 25 years. The 2024 Presidential Medal recipients are Marge Axelrad and Mark Ferrara. Marge, you are a true luminary in the field of eye care and optical journalism. Your exceptional leadership and insightful editorial direction have played a pivotal role in shaping this, the discourse around the eye care industry. Your keen editorial acumen and deep industry knowledge has not only elevated the quality of your publications, but has also established you as a respected authority in the field. Your dedication to providing valuable and relevant content for eye care professionals has been instrumental in fostering knowledge exchange within the industry. Marge, your unwavering commitment to excellence and your passion for advancing eye care has made you an indispensable figure and your influence is felt across the eye care community. Mark, in your role as the CEO of Jobson Medical Information, you always stood out as an exemplary leader in the eye care industry. Your strategic vision, innovative thinking, and unwavering commitment to excellence successfully guided JMI to new heights. Your dynamic leadership style fostered a culture of collaboration and forward thinking, inspiring teams to deliver exceptional services and insights to the eye care community. Mark, your profound understanding of the industry intricacies, coupled with your entrepreneurial spirit, positioned Jobson as a trailblazer in eye care media and information services. Under your guidance, the company was able to evolve and adapt to the ever-changing landscape of healthcare, solidifying your reputation as a transformative force and respected figure in the optical industry. The two of you have demonstrated for all of us how the trade media and its constituents can work together to make each other better. And for that, we thank you. I now invite Mike and Marge, <laughs> Mark and Marge to the stage. Greetings to the class of 2024, distinguished staff, colleagues, families, educators, and the one and only Dr. Howard Purcell for this very special honor today. And it's with extra gratitude that I stand here with my longtime colleague, boss, and very good friend, Mark Ferrara. We have shared a special bond in forging together our many professional years in the eye care and eyewear space, and it's the most special part of today for me. So, graduates, you are facing such a real opportunity right now, and perhaps more than any other class of optometric graduates, 
you are at what's known in the business and the cultural world as an inflection point. That's a term that some of you likely know. In mathematics, a flex point is where the point on a curve changes from convex to concave or back. Then the world in which we live is a bit off of its axis right now. Uh, as we know, climate change, conflicts, new forms of media, institutions are being questioned. Each of us is living in a time where trends and forces, some beyond our control, others very much in our hands, are coming together to create transformation. Geographers call this a tectonic plate change. Things are in the midst of a really big shift right now, and that's where you are. My vantage point is definitely different than yours. I've been editorial director at Jobson's Optical Group, a platform of clinical, professional research and product solution information for many years. Um, platform is the 2024 term for media company. <laughs> uh, one charged with providing news, interpretations of news and trends. We offer a suite of different vision care, optical, patient care brands that have been helping companies and business leaders make decisions about how they operate and have helped, we hope, professionals make better decisions about their own careers and patient care. You and your class are coming uh, to such a critical part of opportunity for the future of eye care. You know, this is not a business or a profession that is often understood outside the traditional boundaries of our profession and business. There is a real hunger for information about the role that vision care can play how to elevate vision care and its relationship to other healthcare professions and to people's health and productive lives in general. And you as a group, as individuals too, um, are part of the change. Uh, we are seeing more women, more people of color join the profession. There's an opportunity for optometry to tell its message in new ways right now, and you are all part of that. I do ask you, implore you actually, to please seek out media in vision care that are not only sharing personal perspectives from individual optometrists and eye care business people, but those that are legitimate, researched, vetted, legitimate media that informs about things that you might not know. Keep learning. It's important to understand um, how to relate to people who are like you and who have the same views as you, but of course it's critically important to make sure you stay in touch with the views that you may not agree with or the ones that you've never heard before because it will resonate as you make your own decisions as doctors. There are a few trends I've seen as a journalist in this category of uh, healthcare and business, and eye care is always a little bit of both. Um, the rise of social purpose, how do you connect yourself to a cause, what's important to you. The advent of artificial intelligence right now in the process of revolutionizing all kinds of care, all kinds of business operations. Learn about it, figure it out. It is not always a challenge to a doctor's decision making. It can be an enhancement of doctor decision making and efficiency. Change is really important. There is no one path for optometrists to follow. Independent optometry has a role that's so important in communities. Uh, it can elevate access to care for underserved communities. Uh, remote exams and teleoptometry are continuing to move forward in, in ways that are comprehensive. And specialization, as I think you all know, specialization in, in optometry has never had more interest from students around the country and around the world. Clinical optometry doesn't stand alone. 
Try to recognize how the essential learning of all kinds can help you guide your own future and elevate the profession that you're embarking on today. Remember that trust and authenticity is not always a given in today's world, so seek it out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marge, for those insightful comments. And our relationship, as you noted, is very special and has helped both of us be successful in our careers. My sincere thanks to Dr. Howard Purcell, the administration, and the trustees of the New England College of Optometry for this honor today. I'd also like to add my heartfelt thanks to my friends and family that are here today to help me celebrate this very special occasion. And finally, congratulations to all of you on your terrific achievement today. I'd like to spend the next few hours, oh, oh no, I meant minutes. <laughs> Sorry, Donna. Talking about what may seem like a very simple concept, but is one that I believe is critical to your futures as you take the next steps in your personal and professional lives. And I didn't confer with Dr. Purcell on this topic, but we're in similar places. My topic is the art and practice of curiosity. First off, I want to declare myself a very big fan of curiosity. And I'd like to note it's driven many of my personal accomplishments since I sat in your chair nearly 50 years ago. But while it would seem that curiosity is a natural and welcome practice for all of us, it's certainly not the case in our society oftentimes, nor is it the natural order of things today. In her excellent cultural history of modern inquiry titled Curiosity, Barbara Benedict outlines the powerful ambivalence and at times hostility to curiosity that has characterized modern life. She details that curious people were sometimes celebrated, but also often derided and demonized, and that the very act and art of being curious or developing new ideas was attacked for its ambition to know what's unknown. As Benedict noted, for progressives, curiosity promised improvement. But for many others, curiosity violated convention and was monstrous in its goals. In many ways, the US is a country built out of curiosity, a country born out of the desire to start anew, a country that was deemed right nearby here, to be a city on the hill for the rest of the Western world. Here we like to think that curiosity is welcomed, embraced, celebrated. And while that is often true, it's not always the case. We merely have to look at various periods in our history to see powerful examples of movements designed to crush curiosity or to condemn different thinking. Take, for example, the Know Nothing Party of the 1850s. Yes, we actually had a political party called that, and it was quite popular. Officially, the Native American Party, as it was titled, had a central position to subvert civil and religious freedom in the United States by keeping immigrants out of the country as they were seen as diluting the purity of the nation. In particular, the Know Nothings wanted to deny Catholics access to any political office because they were seen as part of a papist conspiracy to take over the country. And while we may believe we're very far away from such closed-minded thinking, 
Almost exactly 100 years later, in the 1950s, this country was consumed by McCarthyism, which saw threats everywhere in forms of progressive and curious thinking. The 1950s also witnessed the birth of the John Birch Society, whose founders and followers believed that the current president at the time, Dwight Eisenhower, was actually a communist agent. The John Birch Society believed big government and the deep state was controlled by elite institutions and their graduates, not unlike the institution you graduate from today. <clears throat> I'll conclude by expressing my hope and belief that more central to our society's core and to your future is the spirit that was embodied by Nobel Prize winning psychologist Daniel Kahneman, whose work detailed pathbreaking explorations of human development. As a colleague of Dr. Kahneman recently noted, he should be celebrated for a living and working philosophy that has never been more relevant than it is today. An enthusiasm for collaborating with his intellectual adversaries. Apparently, Dr. Kahneman embraced those who disagreed with his theories and preferred an adversarial collaboration with them rather than a world simply controlled by insults and rejoinders of immaturity. He thought the former approach would help him learn continuously in his life versus the latter, which might confirm his potentially mistaken beliefs. He was, in my mind, the epitome of curiosity. And his commitment to curiosity led him to a Nobel Prize in economics, even though he was a trained psychologist. And as a result, he embraced a devout commitment to lifelong learning. I want to thank the New England College of Optometry again for this award and to congratulate all of you on your commitment to curiosity, which has led you to your achievement today. Thank you. Thank you, Mark and Marge. One outstanding characteristic of your class has been your academic excellence. This is evident in the unprecedented fact that this year we have not one, but six valedictorians who complete the program with a 4.0 grade point average. By the way, this has never happened in the history of the college, so a special congratulations. Each of the valedictorians brings unique characteristics and attributes to NECO. We recognize these graduates for excelling academically, but also celebrate that individually they contribute so much more to our community than just their grades. Please take a moment to read about the students in the program, and I'd ask the following students to please join me at the podium to accept our congratulations for your stellar achievement and well-deserved honor. Kaylee Bran. Sarah Curtin. Kylie Donahue. Bonnie Lowe. Zach Turpal. Zaman Valani. Good morning. And thank you for joining us for such a joyous occasion. 
Zach Zaman and I are honored to be able to speak on behalf of all six valedictorians of the class of 2024. I'd, I'd personally like to thank my friends and family for helping me achieve this goal because I would not be the person that I am standing here today without them. And especially a big thank you and a very happy birthday to one of my biggest supporters, my dad. Hi, dad. Happy birthday. I love you and thank you for all that you've done for me. And on, beha <laughs> and on behalf of the entire class of 2024, I'd like to thank all the friends and family who traveled here to Boston to celebrate us. You have all been such a big part of our journey and none of us would be here today if not for the sacrifices you made. Now to you, my fellow graduates, I plan to leave you with one message. At the end of my first rotation, I received a thoughtful gift from one of my attendings. With the gift, he relayed to me a message, one that I would like to extend to you today. On my very last day, he handed me a compass. On it was engraved the quote, take pride in how far you've come and have faith in how far you can go. As to why it was engraved onto a compass was because he wanted to tell me that even in times that I feel lost, I will always find my way again. And I've kept that compass on my desk throughout this past year, and it's helped me through times where I did in fact feel lost. And in days that your own future might feel a little unclear, I hope you can also find solace in this message because you indeed can go very far. Thank you. Wow. Um, who would have thought they would have let the kid who failed uh, Dr. Hanley's favorite confrontation fields on the first CSC up here today? Um, but here we are, so we're going to go with it. Um, in all seriousness, though, I want to start off by thanking my parents, my brother, and the rest of my family for helping me to get where I am today. None of this would have been possible without their unconditional love and support these past four years. I also want to quickly thank all the NECO faculty members, my professors, and my preceptors who guided me throughout my time here. Uh, the knowledge and guidance you've imparted on me will stick with me throughout my career. Lastly, and most importantly, to the NECO class of 2024, you guys are really the ones that deserve all the props. We've gone through a wild ride here together, and regardless of the fact that there's just a few of us up here representing our class today, by no means is being up here an individual accomplishment. I would not be standing here today without my NECO family, who've been with me side by side every step of the way. Whether it be the long study sessions in the NECO library, or even the group study sessions at the Beacon Street apartment, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without you guys, and for that I'm truly grateful. From friends, to family, and now colleagues, I can't wait to see what each and every one of you do going forward, because I know it's gonna be something amazing. So congratulations to the class of 2024. We earned this together, and it's time to go out there in the real world and show the real world what us doctors are made of. Thank you. To the class of 2024, each and every one of you have dedicated a tremendous amount of time and effort into reaching this milestone today and should be extremely proud of what you've accomplished. Thank you all for making this journey an unforgettable experience for all the friendships made and laughs had along the way. And a special shout out to Pod5 for being the best group to do it with. And yet while we're here today to celebrate our own individual achievements and while it's our name printed on each diploma. I think it's safe to say that none of us would be here today without the support and sacrifices by the people in this room with us here today. I know I wouldn't be standing here without the support of my amazing family, Karen, Steve, Hill, and all the Averys. While today marks the culmination of years of formal education and training through countless written exams, clinical proficiencies, externships, and board exams, most importantly, it marks the beginning of our careers as doctors of optometry. The six of us could not be more proud to call you all our colleagues, and we can't wait to see what each of you will accomplish throughout your careers. As we each set off on our own career paths, we must continue to carry with us a sense of empathy, humility, and integrity for the betterment of our patients' health. Let's enter the profession with confidence, motivation, and a passion to make a difference in people's lives throughout our communities. Thank you, and again, congratulations, Class of 2024. Step right over here, we're gonna get a picture, okay?
One more time, please join me in congratulating the class of 2024 valedictorians. I would now like to recognize those members of the class of 2024 who have been members of the Student Council during part or all of their four years at NECO. We are extremely appreciative of the time and effort you've added to your already busy academic lives to go that extra mile and to take the extra hours to work with your fellow students and the NECO community. I will ask these graduates to stand as I read their names. Please hold your applause until they have all been recognized. Parker. Air. Stephanie Di Pietrantonio, Jessica He, Rakinder Kangura, Sarah Masood, Joshua Normando, Gabriel Ng, Ade Oalawa. Innsbruck Richards, Nathan Shen, Allison Taylor, Ganedra Vigensa, and C. Wang. Thank you all very much for your commitment to the college. Please be seated. I want a special from my heart. Thank you very much. You all worked so closely with me and made me better at what I do, and I appreciate that very much. This year, we would like to honor the outstanding graduates who earned clinical, academic, scholarship, and personal achievement awards at the New England College of Optometry. I will ask these graduates to stand as I read their names. Please hold your applause until all of them have been recognized. In the interest of brevity, I'll refrain from reading the descriptions, which you will be able to read as you follow along in your program. In the category of Personal Achievement Awards, the F. Dow Smith Award, Zach Turple. Zach, there he is. Dr. Hyman R. Kamen's Award, Ade Oalawa. The Dr. Edward Joseph Trundle Jr. Award, Joshua Normando, the David Hubner OD 1986 Scholarship for Teaching Excellence, Zach Turple, the Faculty Scholarship Award, Zach Turple. <laughs> Zach's going to need an escort with all his awards today. In the area of Academic Achievement Awards, our Valedictorian and BSK medals, these names will sound very familiar to you, Kaylee Brand. Sarah Curtin, Kylie Donahue, Bonnie Lowe, Zach Turple, and Zaman Vellani. Our salutatorian award, Jeff Lee. Advanced Standing International Student Program Scholastic Achievement, Anna McLean. The William R. Baldwin Award, Pallavi Cherikar. Eichenbach Award for Excellence in Low Vision, Megan Nizak. The William Feinblum Low Vision Award, Jacqueline O'Connell. The Optelec Excellence in Low Vision Award, Eustina Kang. And Marilyn Tran. The Ned Witkin Leadership in Low Vision Award goes to Bridget Peterson. The Alcon Award, Jeff Lee. The AAOF Award of Excellence in Contact Lenses, Kathleen Tai. The GP Contact Lens Clinical Excellence Award, Tia Conover. For Outstanding Clinical Performance, the Class of 1969 Scholarship, Zach Turple. The New England College of Optometry Clinical Award also this year goes to Zach Turple. A Pediatric and Vision Therapy Award, the COVD Award of Excellence in Vision Therapy this year's recipient is Carrigan Gould. 
the Ira Schwartz Behavioral Vision Award, Elizabeth Schaefer. The Good Light Equipment Award, Allison Ward. Additional scholarship awards, the Vision Service Plan Scholarship. There are two recipients this year, Josh Normando and Zach Turple. The Bider Scholarship, Kristen Horsley, Gabriel Eng, and Innsbruck Richards. The Monty N. Kufos Scholarship Award, two recipients this year, Elizabeth Schaefer and Zach Turple. The Joseph and Judith Ann Feldberg Scholarship, we have four recipients this year, Sarah Curtin, Charlene Jing, Zach Tuple, Turple, and Zaman Valani. Please give these outstanding graduates a round of applause. NECO has one of the largest affiliated postgraduate residency programs in the country. We graduate the candidates for residency certification, I'm sorry, we congratulate the candidates for residency certification whose ceremony will be held as a separate event in June at the completion of their training. Their names and residency affiliations are listed in today's program. Let's give them a round of applause. Graduates, you've had the privilege of learning from internationally respected scholars, researchers, teachers, practitioners, and academic leaders. Will the entire faculty please stand and be recognized? I would like to introduce two faculty members who have received special recognition. Their awards are especially meaningful because they're determined by the students who have learned from them. Dr. Bina Patel, professor of biomedical science and disease, received this year's Foster Namias Award, selected by the class of 2024 for outstanding teaching, committed service to students, and superior knowledge in their field. Dr. Maureen Hanley, Associate Professor of Optometry, received this year's Carol Mortis Award, selected by the Class of 2024 for excellence in teaching and outstanding service to students and to clinical faculty. Would Drs. Patel and Hanley please stand? Congratulations. Doesn't get any better than that, I'll tell you what. Dr. Eric Weisberg, Vice President and Dean of Academic Affairs, will present the master's degree candidates, followed by the doctoral candidates. Dr. Weisberg, will you please join me at the podium? Thank you, Howard. And to all the previous speakers, uh, there's a lot of wisdom in your words, and it's very appreciated. So before presenting the degree candidates, I just want to take a moment to offer my sincerest and heartfelt congratulations. I know that this day means a lot to you, and it means a lot to us, and to me. Uh, there is nothing better than watching you walk across the stage and get the recognition for something that you worked so hard to achieve. You know, of all the things that I'd want you to remember, it's, I think, the most important to me is that you should never underestimate your power, your impact, your ability to influence others. You're here now more powerful, powerful than you were when you started at NECO. The knowledge that you've gained can be used in so many ways. You've already seen what it can do through your clinical experiences, and that's really only the beginning. You know, use your knowledge wisely, Feed it continuously, and always do well and do good. I couldn't be more proud and more happy for all of you and for all of your friends, your family, and your colleagues. And thank you for putting in the work so that we could all be here to celebrate with you today. And now, on to the best part. 
And we're going to start with the Masters of Science in Vision Science, which is designed to provide experience in vision research methodology through the development and execution of an original research project. The program emphasizes research in an area of vision science that is determined by the student's interests and the expertise of the graduate faculty. MS degree candidates develop skills that can help them contribute new knowledge to the field, help them assess new scientific developments relevant to optometry, and enable them to be more competitive for academic and industry positions following graduation. I'll first announce the candidate receiving the standalone Master of Science degree. Manshul Nagpal. Manshul, will you please join us on the stage? I will now announce those students who complete, completed the combined ODMS program to join us on the stage. Please note, these students will be hooded later in the ceremony when they receive their OD degree. So when I call your name, please join us on the stage. Eustina Kang. <laughs> Anastasia Logathetti. Maria Riaz. Allison Taylor. Zach Turple. Morgan Zibkowski. Xiang Jang. stand at their seat, right? If we could ask you to remain standing at your seat, please. So congratulations to each of you. President Purcell, it is my honor and privilege to present to you the candidates for the Master of Science in Vision Science degree. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I hereby confer upon you the degree Masters of Science in Vision Science with all rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. Congratulations. Can I ask Dr. Bina Patel and Maureen Hanley uh, to join us to present the doctoral candidates? And Ms. Tia Vu, our Executive Student Council President, to assist in presenting the diplomas. It is my honor and privilege to present to you the candidates for the Doctor of Optometry degree. Graduates, as I call your name, 
please come forward to be hooded and receive your degree. Beatrice Adamte. Parker Ayer. <laughs> Navjot Baines. Victoria Barham. <laughs> Sean Barillero. Matthew Bollier. <laughs> Matthew Benko. Monica Burchard. <laughs> Ashley Bomarito. Kristen Booney. Kristen will be hooded by her aunt, Kristen Griebel. Kaylee Bran. Como Brar. <laughs> Isaac Bridge. Sydney Batala. <laughs> Daniel Chen. Jenny Chen. <laughs> Jennifer Cheng.
Pallavi Cherikar. Alisa Cheria Chungle. <laughs> Weihua Chong. Alyssa Chow. <laughs> Alyssa Clifford. Kristen Cole. <laughs> Tia Conover. Sarah Curtin. Anastasia D'Amico. Anudeep Dhaliwal. Stephanie Di Pietrantonio. <laughs> Kylie Donahue. Tyler Duris. Tyler will be hooded by his uncle, David Braun. <laughs> Jessica Edward. Jessica will be hooded by her sister, Hannah Edward. <laughs> May Iampakul. Catherine Ensign. <laughs> Avery Fitzgerald. Adrian Fong. Yeah. 
Courtney Francis. Riley Fung. Tabitha Gansel. Chanpreet Garcha. Chanpreet will be hooded by her brother, Bikramjeet Garcha. Dion Gore. Kerrigan Gould. Arshdeep Gurriwal. Madison Gross. Alexander Gruber. Benjamin Ha. <laughs> Jessica He. Kirsten Horsley. <laughs> Jawen Huo. Meryl Iacocca. Charlene Jing. Bhavna Joshi. Justina <laughs> Kang.
Sherry Cow. Allison Kelleher. Rakinder Kangara. Kayla Kinsley. Megan Nizak. Connie Lamb. <laughs> Daniel Lachlan. Eric Law. <laughs> Stephanie Lee. Julia Lentz. <laughs> Jenny Leonard. Jeff Lee. <laughs> Anastasia Logafetti. Bonnie Lowe. Yeah. Lauren Lee. Kristen McIntyre. <laughs> Angela Maxoud. Amulya Madhav.
Kara Madison. Sara Masood. Gladys Mayancela Pichisaka. Anna McLean. Sahani Meg. Brian Morera Bouchard. Abarna Mura Murali Theron. Janine Murray. Gabriel Ng. <laughs> Connie Nguyen. Joshua Normando. Jacqueline O'Connell. Ade Oaloa. Jade Pachico. Monica Park. Brandon Pascal. Brandon will be hooded by his uncle, Mark Sherman. Bridget Peterson. <laughs> Leigh Casey. Eva Q. <laughs> J. 
Joanna Ramani. Sana Rana. Lucy Raptus. Maria Riaz. Innsbruck Richards. Kalpana Rose. Caitlin Rose. Tracy Rosenlicht. Baljot Sani. Mia Sardella. Vaish Satyajit. Elizabeth Schaefer. <laughs> Twinkle Sagel. Nathan Shen. Nathan will be hooded by his father, Herman Shen. Laura Shirley. <laughs> Stephanie Shongut. Rachel Smith.
Vicky Squillini. Allison Taylor. <laughs> Kathleen Tai. Marilyn Tran. Zach Turple. Gaganjot Uppel. <laughs> Zaman Valani. <laughs> Zaman will be hooded by his family friend Anita Gomiri. Michela Valvano. <laughs> Gayanendra Vigesna. Cora Vitali. <laughs> Anna Walker. Christina Wang. Sai Wang. Allison Ward. <laughs> Allison Was. Angelina Wang. <laughs> B. 
Jennifer Windler. Kayla Winchman. Isabella Wong. Sarah Youssef. Morgan Zipkowski. Xiang Jiang. Will the candidates please rise? President Purcell, I am pleased to certify that the members of the class of 2024 have fulfilled all the requirements for the degrees that the college awards in the study of optometry and are recommended to you by the faculty of the New England College of Optometry. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Optometry with all rights and privileges thereunto pertained. Congratulations, doctors. A much deserved round of applause for sure. Please remain standing for the optometric oath. I now call on Dr. Jennifer Riley, Associate Professor of Primary Care, to lead you in the optometric oath, which can be found in your program. Thank you. <laughs> All right, congratulations, graduates. You are officially an alumnus of the New England College of Optometry. As alumni, you will represent your alma mater and make us proud. It is a lifetime association with your fellow optometrists. Please join me in reciting the optometric oath that can be found in your commencement program on the last page. For optometrists in the crowd, you are welcome to join us and stand and recite the oath as well, as well as my colleagues behind me. If you are unable to stand, you may place your hand over your heart. All right, so we'll say this together. I'll get us started, and you can join me. With full deliberation, 
I freely and solemnly pledge that I affirm the health of my patient will be my first consideration. I will practice the art and science of optometry faithfully and conscientiously and to the fullest scope of my competence. I will uphold and honorably promote by example and action the highest standards, ethics, and ideals of my chosen profession and the honor of the degree Doctor of Optometry which has been granted me. I will provide professional care for those who seek my services with concern, with compassion, and with due regard for their human rights and dignity. I will place the treatment of those who seek my care above personal gain and strive to lack proper care. I will hold as privileged and inviolable all information entrusted to me in confidence by my patients. I will advise my patients fully and honestly of all which may serve to restore, maintain, or enhance their vision and general health. I will strive continuously to broaden my knowledge and skills so that my patients may benefit from all new and efficacious means to enhance the care of human vision. I will share information cordially and unselfishly with my fellow optometrists and other professionals for the benefit of patients and the advancement of human knowledge and welfare. I will do my utmost to serve my community, my country, and humankind as a citizen as well as an optometrist. I hereby commit myself to be steadfast in the performance of this, my solemn oath and obligation. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Riley, for leading us today in reciting the optometric oath. Today, we have honored our graduates. I know that every member of this class has enjoyed the support of some very special people in their lives. Now, I would like to offer the graduates a moment to express their appreciation to families and friends who have provided so much help. Will the families of the graduates, mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, children and loved ones, please rise so that you can re receive the thanks you so richly deserve. You can be seated. Can be seated. Congratulations again to all of the graduates. Please remain at your seats to allow the platform party, faculty, special guests, and finally the graduates to fully exit the auditorium. Please remain at your seats until the graduates have exited the room.